During the American War for Independence, the nascent American forces faced a major problem, larger numbers of British warships blockading their coastline. Although this particular issue would eventually be solved by strategic application of the French, it wasn't as if the Americans were just sitting around watching the Royal Navy sail by. A number of attempts at developing novel attack craft, surface, semi-surfaced or submersible, were drawn up, and a few of them were even tried. Of these, the Turtle is perhaps the most famous. Designed by the Connecticut-born David Bushnell, in collaboration with skilled brass maker Isaac Doolittle, the vessel that resulted was named Turtle, ostensibly because it resembled one, or more specifically, it resembled two turtle shells clamped together, albeit I tend to think it looks more like a particularly vicious kinder egg. Made of wood, with a small brass conning tower set on the top, the craft was meant to be operated by a single person. Once inside, a support craft would tow the turtle out to a drop-off point, at which stage the operator would have about 30 minutes of air before they had to surface again. A tank at the bottom would allow water to be admitted, which could make the craft sink, although then establishing the precise level of neutral buoyancy required purely by hand and by eye would be something of a challenge, to say the least. Then, the vessel could be propelled towards its destination by a hand-cranked two-bladed propeller that was mounted on the front, with a tiller-operated rudder aft for directional control. In case the buoyancy levels weren't perfect, another hand-operated propeller was mounted offset atop the craft to at least try and allow for manual adjustments in depth. Surfacing could be carried out either by manually pumping out the ballast tank, or by releasing a bunch of solid weights if it was an emergency, although at that point you weren't going to get the craft to submerge again. The most difficult part of the operation was the deployment of the craft's offensive capability. This took the form of a mine, which was then referred to as a torpedo, which was mounted like a backpack and connected via a line to a top-mounted screw which was adjacent to the top-mounted propeller. The idea was for the turtle to pop up under an enemy ship, use the screw to attach the explosive charge, set a timer, and retreat before everything exploded. Getting an underwater timed fuse to work had proven to be the single most difficult element of the whole development operation. Eventually, in September 1776, Turtle was deployed under the control of one Sergeant Ezra Lee, with the objective of damaging or destroying the small third-rate ship of the line HMS Eagle, which was nearby. According to Lee's account, he reached the Eagle, but was unable to get the screw to attach. Theories as to why this failure occurred range from him accidentally hitting an iron plate near the ship's rudder, which is possible, although it would be spectacularly unlucky, all the way through to carbon dioxide poisoning, sapping his strength, coordination, and ability to think straight, which was also possible given the massive amount of effort that he'd had to exert in moving the turtle around, across currents, and taking into account the limited air supply and ability to surface. The oft-told tale that he was defeated by the ship's copper sheathing, which was placed on the Eagle and many other Royal Navy ships to prevent fouling by marine life and thus preserve their speed, is somewhat unlikely, as the average copper plate that was used for this purpose had about the same thickness as that of your average greetings card, and therefore would not have posed much of a problem to the drill, assuming that it was being operated within the original design specifications, and, you know, not by someone completely addled by carbon dioxide. Whatever the case, with the attempt abandoned, the mine, which had apparently been activated in anticipation of a successful attachment, was apparently let go and would explode somewhere downriver when the timer ran out. Or at least, that's the version of the story told by Lee and Bushnell. Some historians have noted that Eagle's log for the time period covering the attack fails to record anything more extraordinary for the time period in question than a sailor that, who was given a dozen lashes. And whilst, of course, the attack itself may well have been missed, that was, of course, the entire point of Turtle, a mine with over 100 pounds of gunpowder aboard going off should have drawn some attention and have some note of it made in the log. 
But whatever exactly happened that night, Turtle had failed to blow up Eagle. And the following month, Turtle was lost when the ship she was stored aboard was sunk by a Royal Navy frigate squadron who caught it alone on the Hudson River. Bushnell went on to occupy himself with developing what we would today term naval mines before joining the Continental Army in charge of what would again today be termed the combat engineers, and he would serve at the Siege of Yorktown. Bushnell would later get a couple of US Navy submarine tenders named after him, while poor old Turtle has had to make do, at least thus far, with just a single successor vessel, DSV-3, a deep-diving sister craft to DSV-2, the Alvin, which was used, among other things, in the early exploration of the wreck of the Titanic. This latter Turtle was on display at the Mystic Aquarium in Connecticut, and if you happen to be in the area and know if she's still there, let us know in the comments below. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to comment on the pinned post for dry dock questions.